Thanks again for coming back for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 190 for Wednesday, July 8th, 2020, focusing on Proverbs 30 through 31. We see two uh, different sections here as we close out the book of Proverbs today. We see starting in Proverbs 30, the words of Agur, son of Jacob, an oracle. And so these are the only verses that these two names, Agur and Jacob, are used. The wisdom for us that I selected is from verses 7 through 8, which says, Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. So these, yeah, these two things are you know, kind of the all-encompassing things in life for this agar, agar. So remove far from me falsehood and lying. So honesty, pureness of heart, not being tempted to you know, seek selfish gain in regards to your know, relationships to the world around him. He wants to stay true and virtuous and right and just all the things that God represents to Agur. And then the second is interesting, neither poverty nor riches. So yeah, it's interesting to me that, you know, in two senses, you know, the book of Proverbs has, you know, not looked down on anybody who has wealth, right? It's in fact encouraged people to have wealth and resources at their disposal. Um, and, you know, talked about how the fool becomes impoverished and, um, you know, becomes associated with somebody who doesn't work and, you know, is, is more of a bum and a fool in that sense uh, for being hungry and not providing for themselves. On the other hand, too, it's interesting it notes not wanting to have too many riches. And I imagine that is in part by the way that, you know, the more that we have, the more things can manage us. And that could be the challenge of that. Also, too, the more that we have, the more people kind of want what we have and either plot to take it or you'll beg you know, for that. So I'm not exactly sure why it says neither poverty nor riches, but you know, I think that's just like uh, you know, Socrates said, moderation you know, in, in all things, right? Plato, Aristotle, um, Socrates, the sense of, you know, a mean between the extremes. So neither the extreme of poverty, the extreme of riches, we are called to live you know, with modest uh, resources, an emergency fund for rainy days, uh, to trust that God will provide for us um, it, and not have too much riches which will insulate us from caring about the concerns of others. So there you go. Uh, another kind of unique pairing or uh, imagery. I, you know, I picked uh, verses 30 through 31 and just going to list kind of the images that go together. The image of a lion, of a rooster, of a billy goat, and then of a king. And so it's talking about the majesty and the um, you know, sense of power within each of these you know, animals and then within the king for the king's self. Proverbs 30, 15 through 16, I think, is another example of a unique pairing. It says, leeches have two daughters uh, that say, give, give, they cry. Three things are never satisfied, four never say enough. And this is the list in verse 16. Sheol, the barren woman, the earth ever thirsty for water, and the fire that never says enough. So, I'll comment on the first or uh, three out of the four. So Sheol is the place of the dead. It's death, and so it's the idea that when we die, you know, death is always wanting more. Along with that, too, the earth ever thirsty for water. It's the idea that you know the rain always you know goes into the earth and is absorbed down into the earth and filters through uh, you know the earth. Um, yeah, there's a saturation point for the earth and flooding and all of that. But anyways, the, the cons concept is that, you know, 
the rain will be absorbed into the earth. Then fire is pretty self-evident too. If you have a fire going, you put more fuel on top of it, the fire will keep going and grow and grow. So um, using even our language around fire growing is kind of a metaphor too. But the, the fourth one I think is interesting the, of a barren woman. You know, I think this uh, is very true in their society, especially when women were seen as house managers and through that, you know, management also involved, you know, having children. And so, you know, being in charge of managing the affairs of the house and the children, you know, within that um, house. And so a barren woman would in sense some ha you know, in some sense have a role of her life you know, stripped away from her and be crying out to God, you know, for that. And, um, you know, our society is in a little different day and time. Um, and kids are still blessing in our day and time too. I'm not trying to say that, but to say that a woman's role is kind of reduced to this, um, you know, home manager and also a child manager, you know, kind of um, just unfairly kind of reduces the role of women. So, but to say that as well too, I hope that people who want to have children are able to have children and acknowledge that that's not true for everybody. So heart goes out to you who are not uh, able to physically bear children uh, and um, thank you for the ways in which that you uh, you know, seek to promote life and encourage, um, yeah, having a strong family in, in even if, especially too, to those who are willing to adopt and to create a family, even that though you're not able to embody that physically. Um, so anyways, that's probably more rambling than I needed there. In Proverbs 31, we move to a different speaker. It's the words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him is what is said. Again, this name, King Lemuel, is only used here so you know it's another name that has no other connection in the bible in proverbs 31 25 through 26 it says strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue this is the idea of you know having a um as it says in the ode to a capable wife. So the idea of, you know, fitting in again as this society, you know, envision this you know, woman leading within the home and being a home manager. It's talking about the admirable qualities that, you know, are seen within a, a, um, a good home manager and a wife who is, yeah, very God-fearing. So, you know, we see this all kind of summarized in Proverbs 31, 30. It says, Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So, I, I think, you know, these qualities and gifts and skills and strengths are admirable in any person that they arise in. And, uh, you know, aside from its bias, I think it's trying to promote uh, the idea of you know, having harmony and peace and especially um, having a family that is centered around an individual, especially the, you know, the wife, centered around an individual who is you know, very strong, very capable, God-fearing, um, humble, you know, all of the characteristics that are good attributes for anybody to have in their character. So there brings us to the end of the book of Proverbs. So thank you for sticking with me through all of this wisdom from God. I hope you were able to take some away. And if there's anything that you'd like you know, to share and talk about, reach out to me. Happy to, More than happy to talk and hear your thoughts and opinions. So thanks again for joining me for day 90, 190 here on the Daily Bread Bible Study.